Hi, this is Trolls Miklobust. I'm product management for storage networking at Brocade, and I'm here with Andy Dooley of our engineering organization. And today we're going to talk about adaptive rate limiting, um, one of the features of our extension products, like the Brocade 7840 extension switch, um, also in the 7800 extension switch, as well as in the FX824 extension blade for the DCX and 8510 directors. Um, in this session, we're going to talk about uh, what that feature is, how it works, and what you have to worry about in terms of making use of that feature in your um, environment. So, so Andy, adaptive rate limiting. We've had rate limiting since the dawn of time. What is adaptive rate limiting, and, and how is that different from just regular rate limiting? Yeah, so traditionally, you know, you've had a committed rate or just a, a rate limit that you put on the circuit, and, and that kind of boxes you in so that's as fast as you can go. Um, you, you're never going to be able to take advantage of a shared pipe as easily. Uh, you can waste bandwidth. Uh, there's a lot of disadvantages to that. So we created adaptive rate limiting, which allows you to set a, a minimum rate um, or a guaranteed rate, so to speak, and then a maximum rate. And then the actual rate uh, will float between the minimum and maximum uh, based on the amount of data demand or, or the condition of the pipe, if it's clean or not. Right. So instead of it just being a, a fixed rate all along, it's more dynamic and it'll adjust uh, for the conditions. So Andy, it seems like there are two scenarios where adaptive rate limiting gets, uh, gets talked about. Um, one of them is where you have a shared WAN connection, so you've got some replication traffic, but there's other uh, traffic going all over the connection. And then the second scenario is where you might have a dedicated uh, connection for the replication traffic, but uh, it's being shared between multiple extension devices. So let's tackle these kind of one, uh, uh, one after the other. First scenario, shared WAN connection. So let's say we've got some replication traffic, but then there's maybe user traffic, maybe there's some other backup traffic, maybe there's database synchronization traffic going over the same wire. Um, how does adaptive rate limiting come into play in that scenario? Yeah, so what adaptive rate limiting will let you do there is it let you carve out an amount uh, guaranteed for your storage replication traffic, the, mm -hmm. the minimum rate again. Right. Um, but it would also allow you to set a maximum so you could have the storage grow to take up the whole pipe or part of the pipe, you know, depending on, on how much of the shared traffic, uh, you know, you wanted to basically leave clear. Um, you know, so if your storage traffic is active and your, your other traffic is active, you know, you'll be a good citizen there. But if the other traffic, you know, gets shut off and it is leaving the pipe idle there, the storage traffic will actually be able to grow and ARL will grow that rate and it will take up, you know, as much of the pipe then as you want. Right. So basically the platform um, will stay within the committed rate, but it monitors what's going on over that connection. If the other part goes idle, then we'll dynamically make use of the additional bandwidth that's, uh, that's there. Exactly. And then when, if the other traffic comes back on and starts to fill the pipe again, uh, ARL will sense that and it'll bring us back down to the minimum. So you're good, uh, you know, a good citizen, a user of the environment. Got it. Very good. Now, the second scenario is where you have, um, let's say we have a dedicated uh, connection, which is often the case um, you know, between uh, uh, the two data center locations, but you've got um, two of these sitting on either side, or maybe more. Uh, and in fact, that's best, best practice. You always want to have more than one just from reliability purposes. So how does adaptive rate limiting come into play in that scenario, and how, how do you make use of it? Yeah, so if you have a pair A and pair B uh, mm -hmm. of the extension devices, and they're sharing the same dedicated pipe, yep. um, typically speaking, what you can do there is you're going to set the minimum to half on each. So if both are active, each is using half. Um, and then you can set the maximum, though, to consume the whole pipe. Right. And then what that does is if, say, pair A has a catastrophic failure and goes down, uh, pair B will notice that, and then we'll be able to increase the rate to take up the whole pipe. Right, got it. So in other words, you've got two of these, one of them loses power, let's say, or, or there's a cable break, or something takes one of them completely out of commission. The other one will detect that, it'll dynamically expand, and then still drive maximum line rate over distance, so you get the, the same level of throughput even though something really bad happened in the environment. Exactly. And then, you know, when, when you get uh, the A pair repaired and it comes back online, it, it's going to come back out and start taking a bandwidth in the pipe, and then pair B will notice that, and then they'll go back down to the minimum, so they'll be equally sharing the pipe again. Got it. So, so in effect, adaptive rate limiting is actually an essential technology to make sure that you're going to get maximum replication throughput, even in scenarios where something goes really wrong within the environment. What are the considerations that you have to take into account to really make use of this feature within your environment? Well, I think the main thing is know your pipe. 
right? Mm -hmm. know, know how much bandwidth your pipe has. Right. And then know if you're sharing it. If you're sharing it with other applications, you know, what's the expectation for the bandwidth those applications need? So you get a good minimum set. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you can set the max to the, to the maximum amount of the pipe, or, you know, if there's an amount of traffic you just don't want touch from another application there, set the maximum under that. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is always ensure you have enough minimum bandwidth to sustain your replication, especially in a shared environment. Right. So. Right, got it. Now, from the perspective of the uh, replication application, um, are there things that I have to worry about at that front? Uh, on, 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 that, on that front, I know that uh, customers are very, very focused on maintaining recovery point and recovery time objectives. So, um, how do they set up the array to make sure that we can we can take advantage of what the, this platform offers? So, in a failover scenario, they'd obviously want to have their traffic split between pair A and pair B, right? So they have enough connections there. Outside of that, the the algorithm works fairly seamlessly, um, and the application, for the most part, doesn't know other than it can drive traffic faster. Right. So. Again, one of the main things there, though, is always make sure that you have a large enough minimum to satisfy your RPO objectives. Right. So, so sufficient connections to each of the um, extension platforms so that you can make use and still deliver the, the, the right level of bandwidth as you go through um, that scenario. All right. Well, very good. Um, Andy, thank you so much for explaining all of this uh, to us. Um, that wraps up uh, the session on adaptive uh, rate limiting. Uh, thank you for watching. And please stay tuned to the Brigade YouTube channel for additional videos that explain the technical features in our products.